I'm Kevin Young with uh, Moonlight Mantids, and you're watching the Praying Mantis channel. Um, today, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, budwing mantids and specifically their care. Um, I have a, a few different species here: the giant Kenyan, and uh, one of the most common out of the two most commonly kept species, the uh, Parasifidale uh, Argrionena. Argrionena, and then uh, Parasifidale Athens is the other one that's really common, uh, commonly kept in the trade. Um, more recently, the uh, giant uh, Kenyan uh, Parasifidal genus is also becoming quite popular. I have a few of those that I can show you. Not adults, but subadult females anyway. I do happen to have some nymphs, some ooth. Um, I got quite a bit of information for you about uh, all of them, uh, about the, uh, the genus and uh, where they're from, their hatch rate, breeding, and stuff like that. We might get lucky and try to do a little breeding tonight. We'll see if... Uh, if they take, I already tried once, and uh, they're not too interested. We're about three weeks in from the adult female's uh, final malt, and that's basically when you want to start to try. Um, so we'll take a look at them. Uh, we'll go over, over a little bit of uh, random information, then we'll look at some ooth. Um, right behind this camera here, you're actually sitting in the incubator, because it's just where we have the best lighting. And uh, there's a, a few nymph hatching right there. We'll pull a few nymph out, and then we'll show you some adults. If you can just sit tight, I'll go ahead and grab those for you. I think they're up here. Mm. All right. This is a nice sized uh, L1 nymph here. Oh, oh, oh. I'll show you. Check that out. Well, you can't see that too well. They are very ant-like. <laughs> they are. That's what they remind me of. I actually been accused of uh, um, sending these L1, L2, or sorry, L2s. Um, and at L1, L2, they're really dark and small like this. And they look just like an ant, almost. Um, if you can uh, if you can see that. Like, um, this guy ripped me off. He sent me an ant. <laughs> or somebody else uh, ordered some of these uh, bud wings from some of these other, other breeders um, when they're available. And they're, they're, uh, they're a great beginner species, by the way. Super arid, super hardy. And uh, anyway, they, uh, they often complain. People that don't really... Uh, have never kept mantids and then we'll start out with something like this and be like oh my god this person sent me an ant it is not an ant I promise you can tell because of the arms there but uh, you can see what uh, you can see why they thought that very tiny very very curious little thing let's check out a new these hatch at about uh, I think um, uh, somewhere around uh, depending on if it was a successful coupling and everything like that in the first uh, three to four ooth um, you can get about 200 plus to hatch out of these, up oh, and sometimes 300 or so. Um, you might uh, you might not get that lucky and then have just like a, here's the guy I was talking about. A couple more stragglers coming out. Not the not the scouts. You know the scouts come out a few days before. You get five five or six of them. They get the major hatch, which is like the um, you know the 150, 200, sometimes 300, and then you'll get a few more for uh, for up to a couple weeks uh, that hatch out of here. So uh, I'll go ahead and show you right there. There's the youth, and they're coming out of there. Um, but they have a pretty large hatch rate, really hardy, really arid. Um, really don't, uh, we don't really miss these directly when we're watering. We just give them a little bit of water. Um, we really don't give them any substrate. They're, they're kept pretty, uh, pretty plain. Um, so anyway, this, uh, this was laid on 1-0318. Uh, this is the Argrionina. Um, that's how, it's, that's how it's supposed to be pronounced, uh, Parasifidella ar uh, argrionina. And uh, that's probably the most common kind. It's the kind that, uh, that I've been breeding for a few generations now. But uh, since it was, uh, let's see, the, the third and we're at the, uh, well, the 19th. So you're looking at uh, close to two months, um, about 45 days or so, uh, incubation time before they hatch. Let me put him away before he gets away. All right. Put him back in there. Um, just remember to, uh, and I'll give you guys a quick, uh, quick tip about these ooth here. Uh, let me make sure he doesn't escape. Okay. Um, by the way, if you grab one of these tools here, I'm so sorry. I should have been more prepared. Uh, they have a, we have a little tool here that I like to use. I gotta show you this. All right. So uh, since that was a straggler, and uh, there, uh, most of them have come out of there. If you see that center part here on the ooth, right there. And if you notice, if you kind of like gently sort of go against the grain, 
you can see the little slits and where they come out and this one's already been scraped we call it scraping so what you do is you'll take something like a razor knife like that and you'll sort of just very gently without making sure there's no little heads coming out or trying to push out and you'll just scrape against the grain and loosen it all up then uh, and that'll help uh, get any of the stragglers out and increase your hatch significantly sometimes um, sometimes they, it just isn't late uh, isn't uh, hasn't been laid quite right and if you do that and then just kind of give it a, a gentle misting like that you might get a few more nymphs out of that so it just helps the stragglers come out about 45 days incubation for uh, Agrionina Parasiphondale, the budwing mantis, aptly named for the uh, little buds, uh, the very uh, the very small wing butts on the females. They're mostly just for display. Um, they really are what you would call uh, vestigial wings. So uh, on the males, they're they're quite capable. Um, they're 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 very slender. They're about one third size of the females. The males are, and they are very capable of flying. The females, there's not a chance. Um, let me go ahead and grab one of those for you, and I'll show you. I have a few females here that are ready to mate pull these out. I've been raising these for about ooh, maybe eight months. Um, since they're kind of arid, I uh, kind of just uh, go easy on them. Um, I don't... Uh, let me see here. Come on, girly. She just want to be picked up. I, um, I'm not into like power feeding and all that stuff, so you can see she's pretty fat. Uh, she's been adult for about uh, three weeks now. Nice, uh, nice coloration there. Very, very pretty. Uh, about three and a half inches um, from uh, from head to tip of the abdomen there. Um, good coloration on her. She uh, did not want to picked up. She likes her giant mesh net cube. Um, these are really great, by the way, for raising um, uh, adults. Uh, adult mantids in, uh, keeping them in here, especially the arid species because it's nice and uh, ventilated. Um, let me pull a male out for you and then you guys can see the size difference. Maybe we'll get lucky and you can see the uh, male do his little job there. Oh, I'm going to show you. Here he is. He is very alert. Right there. That's the male. Pretty small. Very, very slender. Very capable of flight. That's an adult male, Agrionina, Parasiphondale. Look at that guy. Isn't he gorgeous? Antenna going like crazy. Maybe he can get the, maybe he's, he's, uh, he's able to uh, test the air for the pheromones of the female we just let out. Let me place them fairly close together. That's kind of how you do it. You want to sort of give her something to eat, keep her busy, and then uh, you can put him kind of behind there, um, sort of out of sight in her sort of a kind of her blind spot you want to give her something to eat just like I did there and uh, because of that and I'll show you um, because of that he's gonna be paying attention to her see that looking right at her antennas antennas fixated just right looking right at her she's uh, she's really busy eating that nice cricket there all right and you just kinda they shouldn't be out in the open like this you sh this should be in the cage you should keep her, uh, keep you know, keep her busy. Um, kind of put them uh, sort of, you know, a little lower, um, kind of behind her, sort of in a blind spot. And uh, he, will, his antennas will just twitch, twitch, twitch. And uh, if we're lucky, we'll see him jump over and uh, do his job. Probably not likely though. <laughs> All right, let me see that. I will go ahead and grab that ooth again, so I could show you. This is not the female that laid the ooth. Her mother or her aunt or whatever it was uh, is actually responsible for laying the suit. So here you have the uh, nymph again, the adult male, uh, the youth, and uh, the adult female. Really attractive group. Really great uh, pet mantis. Super easy to keep. Super, super docile. They love to throw their arms out sometimes though uh, and show you that uh, great, great, great wing pattern. I don't think we're going to see these guys hook up, but if they do, I will record it for you. Or at least I'll take pictures and share it. Um, so uh, anyway, these guys come from East Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, um, areas like that. There are a few other uh, Parasiphondale um, members. Uh, the Athens and the Agrionina are the most common um, 
Uh, the, uh, the best thing to start out with, of course, for the nymph are the uh, fruit flies. Not a lot of water. We do not get these wet directly. They do not like to be wet. Um, they, they usually don't drink a lot. Um, and uh, they, uh, they're, uh, they're really, really hardy. Uh, absolutely one of my favorite mantids. There, look at the little wing butts there. Wing buds. Sweet. She is going to town on that guy. All right. Let me put this camera back here. Get a close-up shot of my incubator here. All right. Um, let me go ahead and pull out one of the uh, giant canyon females. Um, I actually haven't raised an adult one of these yet, but I have like... I don't know, maybe eight adult females, or sub, I mean sub-adult females. So, uh, and they're already the size of this female. So, a giant Kenyan, we'll see, I guess. I'll have to post some pictures for you. He's still checking her out. He's, he's focused. He's just looking at her. Um, I don't even know. Maybe you can see this. Oh, oh, oh. No, I scared him. All right, let me grab one of these for you. Two seconds. Hmm, here we go. There is a bit of distinction between the giant Kenyan, which are the Parasifidale species, giant Kenyan. Usually that means uh, we don't really know what it is um, when we uh, label it that way. Definitely a budwing. Um, they got a little bit of blue instead of yellow under their uh, raptoral forearms. And I'll show you, that is a sub, already the size of the um, Agrionena. That is the Kenyan female giant budwing uh, species right there. Absolutely gorgeous. You can tell fairly, uh, you can tell it's a budwing. Definitely Parasifidel genus, but uh, we, uh, we don't know too much more about that other than it's from Kenya, which is basically where the, the genus is, is found. Um, I wish I could get her to sort of show her arms for you. Let me see. She's got some blue and black in there, which normally it's kind of like yellow and green in her forearms there. Well, she looks just happy. Um, kind of a gray color, though. A little bit of green, but some gray in there. Very nice. Very cool species. Relatively new to the hobby. I, uh, I do have an ooth that I got from, the, the, I think, the person that bred these. Uh, I'm not sure if I have any males, but I do have a male coming from a fellow breeder of mine here in the United States. So, all right. Close up shot of those. Kind of get you familiarized with the bud wings there a little bit. All of them from East Africa. Um, super easy care. Fruit flies when they're young. Variety of foods as they grow. They are not picky. Um, the males are really small and kind of skittish. So giving them curly wing or blue bottle flies is a better idea. Maybe some uh, some red runner roaches. I do not give the males crickets. Uh, they're pretty small and slender, and I think they could be, you know, overpowered relatively easily. Anyway, I hope you guys like the new and improved channel. Um, go ahead and hit uh, subscribe and hit that bell icon for us. Um, go ahead and check out Moonlight Mantids at LLC.com if you want to get your own. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and post these along with these uh, with this great video. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments or uh, video requests, go ahead and leave them in the. Uh, um, underneath this video I guess um, anyway uh, let me know what you guys think I hope you like the uh, budwing care video super super simple though I mean there's not much to say about it yeah, you watch any of the other basic nymph care videos and you're gonna get most of the information you need I just gave you a kind of a an all-around uh, you know sort of a species description and uh, sort of show you the different sizes and stuff the hat traits the hat traits are the same for the Kenyans by the way upwards of 200 um, from what I've heard, we'll, we'll find out in the next few weeks. The uh, Uth are relatively the same size too. Shaped a little bit differently, which I'll have to show you when they hatch. Um, hopefully I catch that on video. Not always. Um, I should catch these guys in the act. Um, and if I do, I will go ahead and record that. And um, Well, anyway, thanks for watching. Um, we'll see you later. Bye.